There's one. Oh, baby. Well, trying a brand new pond today. First fish of the day, been, been about an hour. Uh, the, a sub told me about this pond and he said uh, the fishing here is uh, difficult, but there are some big ones in here. The uh, water temp's 82 degrees, so it's really warm. And the water visibility of this pond is two inches, so it's pretty interesting conditions. I'm just throwing this uh, man's baby one minus up shallow and uh, we'll see what happens. Check out what I just found in some rocks. Found a uh, Rapala DT6 uh, in good condition too. Great find. Just found this Rapala and I found quite a few lures while I've been fishing. But uh, down here, this is the first time I've seen uh, that before. And if you don't know what it is, uh, don't worry about it. You don't want to know. bite. Do I have a fish on? I think I do. Yep. There we go. I was casting so far out there. I couldn't tell I had a fish. It's a good one too. It's a real good one. Cast right to the middle of that fountain. Where the, uh, oh, it's a nice fish. That's a big one. Whoa! Whoa! Holy mackerel! What? Jeez. All right, guys, this is a five pounder right here. Jeez. Casting wet, like I said, the deepest part of this uh, lake, of this little pond, is right in by that fountain. Oh my gosh! Whoa! Goodness, goodness! Lower the drag, lower the drag! All right. Whew. Let me take him to the rocks. Jeez! Second fish of the day. It's an absolute giant. Just switched to a brush hog about two minutes ago because uh, the moving a bite wasn't happening. The water is too uh, warm. Jeez, I can't believe this. Oh my gosh. Oh, I should be good. Because this uh, brush hog, these gamagatsu hooks usually pin them pretty well. Just make sure I play this guy correctly. That would be heartbreaking if I lost this fish. Got him. Got him. <laughs> That's the easy five. He gut hooked him. A little bit because um, I didn't I didn't even feel him on there. I didn't even know he was on there. So I'm gonna show you the correct technique. But boom, didn't have to. Be, it didn't hurt the bass at all. Just like that, remove the hook. That's key. Keep this fish healthy. I'm gonna let this guy rest in the water before I get a weight in a picture. Official weight. Looks like this fish is probably a little bit under five pounds after taking a good look at him. He's a fat fish, but not that long. Uh, we got four pounds and, oh, five pounds, five pounds even, right on the dot. Whew, solid fish. Ah. See ya. There she goes. There's another one. Another good fish. This guy took it and darted off. I just left, I made a loop around the, oh, nice jump. I mean, these fish are healthy. I made a loop around the pond. I'm back at the same fountain where I caught the five pounder. Just landed this nice fish. Still using the uh, brush hog. That's a solid fish. Whew. Perfect hook set right inside of the mouth. It's about a two and a half pounder. Let him go. This 
So what's happening out here is there's five fountains and the fountain I'm fishing has the deepest water around it. Um, the average depth around the lake is six feet and I know this because I used my deeper uh, fish finder when I got out here. And uh, the uh, depth around this fountain that I'm fishing right now is about 12 feet and uh, it's about 60 yards away. So I couldn't get my deeper to get a reading that far, but uh, I am able to make a cast that far using a half ounce weight in this brush hog. So I'm casting way out there and the, uh, the reason why the bass are there is one because the water is uh, the, the fountain's moving water so the water is going to be cooler it'll be more comfortable for them to relax around there and also there's a ton of shad in this lake like a ridiculous amount and all the shad literally all the shad are around the various fountains every time i make a cast i basically see two shad jump up right around the fountain because i'm spooking them so the bass are hanging right near the bottom uh i guess when they're hungry they probably move up and try to catch a shad but otherwise they're just hanging out by the deeper cool of water and when I uh, drag this brush hog in front of him, they're eating it. And I'm pretty surprised that I couldn't catch any fish around any of the other four fountains. Not yet, at least. I've been out here for about um, three hours now. So it's, it hasn't been a superb day, but anytime you catch big fish, it's awesome. And the water's 82 degrees, so it's not like it's an easy day. Um, yeah, but the uh, water around the other fountains ranges from six to eight feet. So that's pretty key that uh, the most shad and the most bass can be hanging around the uh, fountain that happens to be the deepest. So it's kind of difficult to reach, but uh, if you use the proper gear and a uh, good cast technique, you can reach out there. There's one. Reeling in the flutter spoon. Holy mackerel. All right, well, like I said, guys, uh, I just switched to a flutter spoon to try to imitate the shad. Looks like I accidentally snagged one. So this shad's really big, um, but there's a lot of smaller ones that are uh, hanging out by the fountains. I've seen them. Yeah, a bass is gonna have a trouble eating one this big, but when these guys spawn, has a, have those perfect three to four inch fingerlings for the bass to snack on. Oh yeah. Just cast yeah. When mm -hmm. I went straight out, I'd never do. What do I got? Did I hook the fountain? I didn't know I could even hook the fountain, dude. Yeah. I bent the hooks. Pulled my bait free, 14 pound fluorocarbon. These are stock Strike King hooks on here. They're actually known to be pretty low quality. And uh, you can see that uh, that's probably the case. Whew, it's seven o'clock. I've been out here since 9.30 a.m. I had two Chick-fil-A breaks. Uh, two of my subs came out. One of my subs is over there, Will. Then another sub, Pablo, was out here. He uh, left recently. But uh, it's, been a, it's been a grind. It was worth it for that five pounder, but uh, it was real tough today. Uh, I don't even think it's because of the water temperature because we've had cool temperatures all day, so the water should be fine. But the, I haven't had a single bite since two o'clock. The main factor, I think, is that the water level dropped. Pablo was out here last weekend on Saturday. He caught 15 bass in like two hours. And he also told me that the water level was three feet higher than it is now. So I'm not really sure where, where all the water went, but uh, that definitely played a huge role. Uh, the bass, he caught all his bass up shallow. Um, today the bass were way out near, near the fountains for me. And I'm sure there's a ton of bass just suspending out there. So the drop of water level definitely hurt the fishing. But uh, it'll raise up in the fall again. I'll be back out here to uh, slay some more.